Hi there. Today we're embarking on a captivating journey as we step back in time to explore the legendary TV series The Addams Family. I'm sure many of you have fond memories of this classic show. The Addams Family is a timeless gem that has left an indelible mark on television history. Join us as we relive the magic, revisiting the series with the entire cast, then and now. We'll uncover the original identities and ages of the talented actors from the show and witness how they've transformed in 2023. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of The Adams Family. Number 1. John Astin as Gomez Adams Gomez Adams, the patriarch of the Adams family, embodies a unique blend of suavity, romance, eccentricity, passion, and enthusiasm. His perspective on the world is decidedly skewed, as he revels in all things ghoulish, ghastly, and even violent, while harboring a disdain for anything bright and cheery. Gomez is the epitome of mercurial emotions, capable of swinging from crushing despair to blissful happiness at the drop of a hat. Despite his wild emotional fluctuations, Morticia's steady presence serves as a balancing force in his life. Bristling with manic energy from every pore, actor and director John Astin specialized in oddball characters whose sense of joie de vivre rarely got in the way of reality, most notably Gomez Adams, his iconic role on The Adams Family. He had been a stage performer and minor character actor prior to being cast as Gomez, and his pop-eyed, relentlessly cheery turn as the bizarre paterfamilias instantly launched him to stardom. From there, he worked regularly as a guest star on television while honing an infrequent second career as a director, which included an Oscar nomination for his short Prelude. He remained a favorite thanks to his Adams past which gave him a decidedly kooky, small-screen immortality. Notably, he was married to actress Patty Duke, and they had two children, one of whom was adopted from Duke's previous marriage. Interestingly, the adopted child was none other than Rudy himself, Sean Astin. This demonstrates how Hollywood connections can span across family lines. The marriage between Sean Astin and Patty Duke lasted from 1972 to 1985. Gomez Adams played by John Astin when he was 34 years old, and now he is 93 years old. Number two, Carolyn Jones as Morticia Adams, elegant, aloof, poised, deadpan, well-mannered, and protective, such as the enigmatic persona of Morticia. While she adores actual weaponry, her chosen form of defense is words. Always polite, Morticia is unafraid to express her opinions and sees no reason to apologize for her family's unusual lifestyle. Confronting a potential threat, she clarifies, Our credo is, Sic gorgiamus allos subjectatos nunc. We gladly feast on those who would subdue us. Not just pretty words. Morticia a captivating blend of grace, intellect, and unwavering devotion to her unconventional family. Carolyn Jones, a talented character player with a distinctive alto voice and strikingly large eyes, was known for her offbeat rollies. Carolyn Jones, born on April 28, 1930, in Amarillo, Texas, faced a challenging childhood market by adversity. Her mother, Chloe, struggled with agoraphobia, and Caroline never had the chance to know her father, Julius, who had abandoned the family. Compounding her difficulties, Caroline suffered from severe asthma as a child, limiting her activities. Jeffrey Mark, a pop culture historian, notes, Caroline had lung problems as a child, so much so that, like many young people, she ended up in show business with the fantasy of it being an escape. All she could do was listen to the radio. She couldn't even go to the movies, so she would read movie magazines. She aimed her life toward that because, in essence, that was her reality. Despite the challenges, Carolyn Jones turned to show business, finding solace and inspiration in the world of entertainment. Her notable contributions include an Oscar-nominated supporting performance as a quirky, artsy character in The Bachelor Party, 1957. 
Jones, once married to producer Aaron Spelling, is particularly remembered for her highly amusing portrayal of the deliberately ghoulish Morticia on the ABC TV sitcom The Addams Family. A decade later, Jones secured the role of the power-driven matriarch Myrna Clegg in the CBS daytime soap opera Capital. Unfortunately, Shortly after the debut of Capital, she was diagnosed with cancer and had to play many of her scenes in a wheelchair. Morticia Adams was played by Carolyn Jones when she was 34 years old. Sadly, in July 1983, she fell into a coma at her home in West Hollywood, California, where she died on August 3, 1983. Number 3. Jackie Coogan as Uncle Fester Despite Uncle Fester's menacing look and peculiar behavior, he is, in fact, gentle and caring to everyone. He holds great respect for Gomez and Morticia, and his affection for his niece and nephew shines through despite their frequent mischief. Interestingly, Uncle Fester is no stranger to mischief himself. In his youth, he and Gomez would blow up parts of a lake for fun, showcasing a mischievous side. He also takes pleasure in scaring people he encounters. Jackie Coogan, renowned for his portrayal of the lovable Uncle Fester, began his movie career as a child actor in silent films. In addition to his acting, he gained recognition for his charity work. In 1924, he initiated the Children's Crusade, a fundraising drive that raised over $1 million in clothing, food, and essential items. After World War II, Coogan's career shifted to television where he achieved success as Uncle Fester on The Addams Family, airing on ABC from 1964 to 1966. When Coogan turned 21 in 1935, he discovered that the $4 million trust from his childhood acting career, equivalent to about $75 million today, had been squandered by his mother and stepfather, the latter of whom she had married following his father's death. In response, he sued them and received only a meager amount after accounting for legal fees. Remarkably, neither his mother nor stepfather expressed any remorse for their actions. However, in the aftermath of this case, in 1939, the state of California enacted the California Child Actors Bill to prevent similar situations for young performers in the future. Uncle Fester played by Jackie Coogan when he was 50 years old. Sadly, after suffering from heart and kidney ailments, Coogan died of heart failure on March 1, 1984, at age 69, in Santa Monica, California. Number 4. Ted Cassid as Lurch Lurch is a tall, shambling, and lugubrious butler who bears a resemblance to Frankenstein's monster. In film adaptations, he is known for his deep, resonant voice. Initially depicted with a black beard in his first appearance in a cartoon by Charles Adams, later iterations of Lurch portray him as clean-shaven. His distinctive appearance and unique characteristics make him an iconic and memorable character in the Adams Family universe. Ted Cassidy, standing tall at an impressive 6FT9 in, is best known for his deep bass voice that became his signature. His notable role as Lurch in The Addams Family not only showcased his acting prowess, but also inadvertently expanded the character when his ad-libbed line, You Rang, became an instant hit. Cassidy's voice became his golden ticket, leading to narrating the Incredible Hulk TV series and lending his vocal talents to various cartoons, including Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, and Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels. His towering height opened doors to remarkable guest roles, such as portraying Bigfoot in a two-parter for The Six Million Dollar Man in 1976. Beyond his physical stature, Ted Cassidy's voice and versatile talents left an indelible mark on both live-action and animated entertainment. Lurch was played by Ted Cassidy when he was 32 years old. Sadly, Cassidy underwent surgery at St. Vincent Medical Center in Los Angeles to have a benign tumor removed from his heart. Complications arose several days later while he was recuperating at home. He was readmitted to the same hospital, 
where he died on January 16, 1979, at age 46. Number 5. Marie Blake, as Grandmama Grandmama, is most likely recognized by her frizzy gray hair and shawl. In the 1991 film, Mother Adams presented a different image, characterized by beauty, with long hair and a slim figure. Depicted in a sleeveless dress in a statue, there's a humorous reference to her potentially having modeled when Gomez finds a magazine that Fester is reading, and they both remark, Mom. She is also distinguished by her cynical and morbid sense of humor, as well as her recreational interest in the occult. Additionally, she's known for her penchant for stealing from the rich. Grandmama, the beloved character from the Adams family, is none other than Mari Blake, born Edith Marie Blossom. MacDonald, in 1845, she later adopted the stage name Marie Blake. Transitioning to broader stages, Edith toured with her husband in Grand Hotel and later played a streetwalker in Dead End in 1936. Her talent caught the eye of an MGM talent agent, leading to her debut as Marie Blake in Joan Crawford's Mannequin. In 1938, she found success as Sally, the phone operator in the Dr. Kildare series. Following the conclusion of the Dr. Kildare series in 1947, she left MGM, adopting the stage name Blossom Rock, for her freelance and bit part endeavors. Notably, she gained widespread recognition for her role as Grandmama in the Adams Family series. Edith's husband, Clarence Rock, served as the night manager at the Beverly Hilton Hotel for 15 years until his passing in 1960. After retiring, Blossom Rock lived at the Motion Picture Country Home. Grandmama was played by Marie Blake when she was 58 years old. Unfortunately, she died following a series of strokes at age 82 on January 14, 1978, in Philadelphia, Los Angeles. Number 6. Lisa Loring as Wednesday Adams. Wednesday Adams exhibits sadistic tendencies and a dark, sarcastic personality, showcasing a deep interest in the Bermuda Triangle, a fascination that remains a consistent theme across various adaptations. Morticia Adams also holds admiration for an ancestor, Great Aunt Calpurnia Adams, who faced execution as a witch in 1706. Lisa Loring, an actress with a successful Hollywood career, initially gained recognition through her roles in notable series, such as As the World Turns, The Adams Family, and The Pruitts of Southampton. As her career progressed, Loring took on diverse roles in projects like Annie Flynn, Gabe and Walker, and Iced, where she shared the screen with Deborah DeLiso. Notably, she appeared in the action movie Death Feud, 1990, alongside Frank Stallone. In 1991, Lisa Loring faced personal challenges as she battled heroin addiction, but she successfully completed addiction treatment the following year. Despite this hiatus, she made a return to acting in 2011. However, her appearances have been sporadic, with roles in 2014 and 2015, including the film Surge of Power, 2006. Loring's journey reflects her resilience and commitment to both personal recovery and her craft. Wednesday, Adams was played by Lisa Loring when she was six years old. Unfortunately, Loring had a stroke, possibly caused by smoking and hypertension, and died at Providence St. Joseph Medical Center in Burbank, California, on January 28, 2023, at age 64. Number 7. Ken Weatherwax as Pugsley Adams Pugsley Adams' personality changes throughout the series, shifting between being a deviant and serving as Wednesday's sidekick. Despite occasional dangerous games, he generally cares for the Adams family. One consistent trait is his penchant for stealing signs to decorate his room. As a budding inventor, he contributed to the creation of Wizzo the Computer, Smiley the Robot, and a functional disintegrating gun. Later on, he pursued education at Nairobi Medical School and ultimately became a witch doctor. John Provost is an actor hailing from an illustrious family in the entertainment industry. His aunt is the renowned actress and dancer Ruby Keeler. 
adding to the family's artistic legacy. His half-brother, Joe Vieira, notably portrayed Porky on the first three seasons of Lassie. Weatherwax's journey took an unconventional turn when he withdrew from acting, later joining the U.S. Army and serving from 1972 to 1974. After his military service, he transitioned to the world of entertainment behind the scenes, working as a stagehand and grip at Universal Studios. However, in 2002, Weatherwax faced a significant life shift. He decided to step away from work to care for his mother, who had suffered a stroke. Her passing later that year left Weatherwax grappling with severe depression. Pugsley Adams played by Ken Weatherwax when he was nine years old. Sadly, Weatherwax died on December 7, 2014, of a heart attack at his home in West Hills, California, at the age of 59. Number eight, Felix Silla as Cousin It Cousin It's, not just a member of the family. He's the Adams family's resident playboy, a rare distinction that sets him apart and earns him societal acceptance. Cousin It makes a return in the Adams family, too, with the unmistakable voice of Snoop Dogg bringing this iconic character to life once again. Pint-sized actor and stuntman Felix Silla was best known for playing diminutive robots and alien creatures on numerous sci-fi screen sagas. Born in Rome, Italy, and trained as a circus performer, Silla immigrated to the United States as part of the Ringling Brass and Barnum and Bailey Circus. A trapeze and tumbling specialist, Silla was initially brought to Hollywood as a stuntman, but because of his small size, he began appearing in a number of odd character roles. Portrayed initially by Felix Silla in the 1964 series, the character underwent various renditions by different actors in subsequent spin-offs. Despite the obscured appearance, Cousin It's voice has been voiced by several artists, with Snoop Dogg taking on the role in the 2019 animated film. Felix Silla, the primary actor behind Cousin It, continued his career with diverse roles, including contributing his voice to The Sims 2 and portraying the robot Tweaky in Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Cousin It played by Felix Silla when he was 32 years old. Sadly, on 13 June 1977, Felix Silla died on April 16, 2021, from pancreatic cancer at the age of 84 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Number 9. Parley Bear as Mr. Henson Parley Bear, a character actor whose six-decade career encompassed more than 60 motion pictures, one out of 600 television shows, and 15,000 radio programs, was never a household name. Still, his voice and face were familiar to generations of listeners and viewers. Originally a circus ringmaster, Bayer began his career in radio in 1933 and became a fixture of the medium, appearing on shows such as The Count of Monte Cristo, Lux Radio Theater, Screen Director's Playhouse, Cisco Kid, Red Rider, My Friend Irma, My Favorite Husband, and in his most well-known role, Gunsmoke where he originated the role of Chester Proudfoot. Mr. Henson played by Parley Bear when he was 51 years old. Sadly, on November 11, 2002, following another stroke, Bear was taken to the motion picture and television country house and hospital. Eleven days later, at the age of 88, he died there. Number 10. Vito Scotti as Sam Picasso Vito Scotti, born in San Francisco, initially spent his early years in Italy before returning to New York with his mother, who was a performer in the Italian theater. Immersed in the world of farcical comedy and exaggerated mannerisms, Scotty honed his skills, setting the stage for a prolific career in supporting roles in both film and television. Starting as a magician and pantomime in nightclubs during the 1940s, Scotty transitioned into film and early TV work, Due to his ethnic background, he often found himself typecast as the swarthy foreigner, portraying characters like bandits, waiters, barbers, and various immigrants. However, his comedic talent was a standout feature, leading to meatier roles as a comedic foil and exasperated put-upon side characters in popular shows such as The Addams Family, The Munsters, Gilligan's Island, The Andy Griffith Show, Batman, 
and, notably, as Captain Gaspar Fomento in the recurring role on The Flying Nun. Despite not achieving huge fame, Scotty enjoyed a consistent and enduring career, spanning over 50 years and encompassing more than 200 productions. His memorable turn as the baker in Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather in 1972 remains one of his most famous roles, and he was esteemed in the Hollywood community as a master of his craft. Mr. Henson played by Parley Bear when he was 46 years old. Sadly, Scotty died of lung cancer at the Motion Picture and Television Country House and Hospital in Woodland Hills, California, on June 5, 1996. As we reflect on the incredible journey of the Adams Family Show, cast from 1964 to 1966, witnessing their growth and transformations, it's evident that the bond forged during those years has left an enduring legacy. From thrilling highway pursuits to heartwarming moments, these actors brought the California Highway Patrol to life. Their stories continue to resonate with fans around the world. As we explore their then and now, we celebrate the enduring impact of the Adams Family. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic trip down the California highways with the remarkable The Adams Family of Yesteryear.